If you want to know more about blood sugar issues, insulin resistance or diabetes, then keep watching this video. Welcome to the Omar Show. So what is the glycemic index and glycemic load? Have you ever had your blood sugar level tested or heard about eating to balance blood sugar? Have you ever wondered about the science behind how food affects blood sugar? Or more importantly, which foods affect your blood sugar more than others? If so, this video is just for you. It's all about the glycemic index and glycemic load. And it's not boring, I promise you that. Watch this video because you may want to pay attention to foods that are high on the glycemic index or high glycemic load. And if you are at risk of blood sugar issues, pancreas condition, or even diabetes, this is important for you to know. So, what is the glycemic index and glycemic load? Glycemic this and glycemic that, does it matter? You'll notice that they both begin with glycemic. That's one tip that they have to do with sugars and carbs. Not only how much sugar is in foods, but most importantly, how it affects your blood sugar levels. In general, diets that are high on the glycemic index, GI, and high in glycemic load, GL, tend to increase the risk of diabetes and heart disease. Fun fact, starches like those in potatoes and grains are digested into sugar. This is because starch is just a bunch of sugars linked together. Digestive enzymes break those bonds so that the sugars become free then those sugars affect your body the same way that eating sugary foods do. Glycemic index, how fast? The most common of the two terms is glycemic index. As the name suggests, it indexes or compares the effect that different foods have on your blood sugar level. Then each food is given scores from zero, that means no effect on blood sugar, to 100, big effect on blood sugar. Foods that cause a fast increase in blood sugar have a high GI. That is because the sugar in them is quickly processed by your digestive system and absorbed into your blood. They cause a spike in your blood sugar. So you can probably guess that pure glucose is given a GI rating of 100. On the other hand, chickpeas are right down there at GI of 10. Regarding glycemic index, low is anything under 55 moderate is 56 to 69, and 70 plus is considered a high GI food. Remember, this is a measure of how fast a carbohydrate containing food is digested and raised your blood sugar. It's not a measure of the sugar content of the food. It's very important to understand that. How the carbohydrates in food affect your blood sugar level depend on other components of the food. Things like fiber and protein can slow the release of sugar into the bloodstream. And this can make even a high sugar food low on the GI scale. I hope you're getting that. So lower GI foods are better at keeping your blood sugar levels stable because they don't increase your blood sugar level as fast. Fun fact, can you guess which food has GI of higher than 100? Think about super starchy, white potatoes. They have the GI of triple one. Glycemic load, how much? The glycemic load is different. Glycemic load, we can also call it GL, doesn't take into account how quickly your blood sugar spikes, but it looks at how high that spike is. Basically, how much the food increases your blood sugar. So GL depends on two things. First, how much sugar is actually in the food. Second, how much of the food is typically eaten. So low GL, that is glycemic load, would be 0 to 10. Moderate GL would be 10 to 20. And high GL would be 20 plus. Excerpts from Harvard Health Publications, glycemic index and glycemic load for 100 plus foods. As you can see, the banana and orange have almost the same glycemic index. This means they both raise your blood sugar in about the same amount of time. But the average banana raises the blood sugar twice as high, 11, as the orange does, 
5. So it contains more overall sugar than the same amount of 120 gram of orange. Of course, this is all relative. A GL of 11 is not high at all. Please keep eating whole fruits. What does this all mean for your health? Certain people should be aware of the effect that foods have on their blood sugar. People who have diabetes or pre-diabetes conditions like insulin resistance need to be aware of the glycemic index and glycemic load of foods they are eating regularly. The GI and GL are just two factors to consider when it comes to blood sugar. Some high GI foods are pretty good for you, but if you want to reduce the impact on your blood sugar, have them with a high fiber or high protein foods. Conclusion. If you have blood sugar imbalances or diabetes, you should probably be aware of the GI and GL of your food. Very important. So if you are at risk of diabetes or heart disease, you might try swapping out some higher GI and GL foods and replacing with lower GI and GL foods. I hope you found this video informative. Like it, comment on it. I'm always waiting to hear from you. Subscribe to my channel and share with people you know are suffering from diabetes. It will be very helpful to them. And also get on to my Insiders Club. Go on my website. Every week I send out two newsletters filled with information on overall well-being that will keep you healthy and happy. Sending you lots of love and health.